I have loaded this image, this photograph, into GIMP, and we can see that the size of the photograph is actually displayed here. And we can see it's 3456 pixels by 2304 pixels. Now my monitor is actually set up at 1280 pixels by 720 pixels. And you can see that GIMP actually loads the image up at a logical size so I could see it. Because if I was to have this loaded at the actual size of the image, then we wouldn't see all of the photograph. If you come down here, you can see that we actually have this at 18.2%. In other words, this image has been shrunk down to enable us to, to view it. I can come here and I can alter this percentage to 100%. And when I do, the image appears in GIMP, but we don't have the full image in view. But you can see we can look at various parts of the image using the scroll bars. It's as if the image is now bigger than our monitor and we can use the scroll bars to look at different parts. I'm now changing it to 12.5% and you can see it goes smaller. Now I've put it back to 18.2 which is the original size it was loaded in. I've now loaded it in at 800%. Now this means that the image has actually been placed on the screen at a very large size and it then means we can be looking at the detail of the image in various regions and we can see the actual pixels that appear in the image itself. Um, so it's important to realise that we still have the original image here, we just effectively zoomed in on it. The image is now at its original size when loaded. If you come here to the zoom under the view menu, you can see here we have the ability to change the image size to all of these different percentages as listed in the pull down menu. Also under the zoom menu we have fit image in window. Now if we select that what we will see is that the image appears in all of the available space we have within GIMP. So this gives us the biggest view we can have of the image for the setup that I have. Now if we come to this part of the pull down menu and choose image and come down to where it says scale image we'll be presented with this dialog box and there are a few things we're interested in here. The first thing is if we look in this region we can see we have the width and the height and we can see that the width is set to 3456 and the height is 2304. And down here, we can see we have the X and Y set up the resolution at 72 pixels per inch. Now, if we're going to be altering the size of images for the screen, we're really not bothered about these two here. Down here, we have a selection of quality algorithms that will work on how we scale the image. And I would go with the cubic one because this gives a very high quality alteration when we scale our image. Here you can see there's a chain and that's a link. And that means if I decided to alter this width in some way, the height would alter by the same proportion. So if I was to divide this number here by 2, then this one here would also automatically be divided by 2 because this chain is in the position it is, i.e. closed. This link is closed. We can unlink this, which I'll show later. Getting back to this dialog box, I'm going to type into here divide by 2. And you can see the symbol I've actually used to divide is that forward slash. And then when I click into the height box, you can see that automatically also gets divided by 2. Once we've decided what we want to scale by, we click on this button and we scale. And you can see that the image actually gets scaled to half its size. Going back to the drop down image, I'm going to choose scale image again. On this occasion, I'm not going to divide by 2. I'm actually going to type in the size I want. I want it to be 600 and that makes the height 400. Click on scale and you can see this is the size of the image now. I'm going to change this to 100%. And what you're now looking at is the size of the image as it appears on my monitor, 600 by 400 pixels. 
Now, this particular size means if I was to save this, I would have something that takes up less space than the original picture. So it's now ideal for loading up to a website because it won't take up as much room on the server on the website. Or if you wanted to quickly send somebody an image via an email, rather than send the original very large size, you could crunch it down using this approach to something that's smaller and they can still see what the image looked like. Now I must stress that this is how we change it for the screen. Having something 600 by 400 would not give you a very good photograph for example. Um, and we'll come on to look how we do it for photographs in a later video. Well, I'm going to go back to image again. I'm going to go to scale image and on this occasion I'm going to reduce the size to something much smaller. I'm going to change it to 200 so it becomes 200 by 133 pixels. And then I'm going to go back to view, I'm going to, go to zoom and I'm going to ask it to fit image in window. And now if you look at this particular image, which has been made much smaller, you can see we've lost lots of detail. And you can see in this region here it's very pixelated. In fact, it's pixelated in all regions. But if I now change this back to 100%, you can get a, a look of the actual image. Maybe it actually is a little bit too small in this case, even for um, going onto a website. But it could act as a thumbnail of some kind. But here you can see what we've done. We've reduced it down further and you can see that you lose a considerable amount of detail in the sense that the image becomes a lot more pixelated. And it's clear that this particular image would be useless for a photograph. I mean, you would have a very pixelated photograph if you attempted to print this one. I'm going to go back to image and I'm going to come down here to scale image and I'm going to click on this link to break the link. I'm now going to change this to 600 and when I do you can see the height does not change. Then we click on scale and you can see it becomes very distorted. So if you click on the chain to break the chain and you alter one of the dimensions, the other dimension does not alter. And of course you then get this very distorted looking image. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.